everyone, welcome to ClearSquare's Excel for Data Analysis series. My name is Mary and I'll be your instructor for the duration of this free Excel course. Throughout this series, we'll go through everything you will need to know about Excel for Data Analysis, from foundational concepts like data types and basic functions to more advanced concepts like using Power Query and sharing dashboards. In today's video, I'll show you how to get data in Excel and some shortcuts and best practices. So as a data analyst, it is hugely important to work as efficiently as possible. When you're using point and click applications like Excel, it may not be immediately obvious what opportunities you have to work efficiently and save time. So let me show you a few tricks to help you optimize Excel and make it work like a true analytics tool. In this video, we'll cover some basic keyboard shortcuts and Excel best practices to help you get started working with Excel. All right, so first let's walk through some keyboard shortcuts that every data analyst should know. If you want to follow along, I'm going to be using this warehouse and retail sales data set from data.gov. I'll have it linked in the description of this video. To open this up in Excel, just download the file as a CSV, then go ahead and open up a new Excel workbook. In the top ribbon, navigate over to data and click on get data. Now go ahead and click on text slash CSV, click on browse and find where you save the file on your computer. Then click get data. Go ahead and click next. Make sure the delimiter is set to comma and then click load. This is a very large file, so it's probably gonna take a few minutes for Excel to get the data. All right, so this is a very large data set. It has over 300,000 rows. So I don't wanna scroll all the way down to see the end of my data set. That would take way too long. So instead, I'm going to click on any cell in my table and I'm just gonna use the shortcut Command plus the down arrow key and that will take me to the very end of my data set. If you're using a PC, the shortcut is control plus the down arrow key. Similarly, if you want to quickly find the top row of your data set, you can just hit command plus the up arrow key or control up if you're on a PC. You can also take this shortcut a step further. If you wanted to actually select a bunch of cells in your table, you can use the shortcut command shift down or control shift down on a PC. So just click on any cell in your table. In this case, let's just say that I want to select all of the cells in my table. So I'm just gonna select the entire first row. Then I'll just go ahead and use that shortcut, Command Shift Down, and that will select all of the cells from the cell that you originally selected through the end of your table. The next handy shortcut I have for you is Command 1 or Control 1 on a PC. This will open up the Format menu, and many of the utilities in this menu are also found in the Home tab, but I find that it's much quicker and easier to find what I need from this menu. All right, next we have Command F or Control F on a PC. So if you're not already familiar with this shortcut, this will open up the Find tool. From here, you can type in whatever you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for cider. Then I can just hit enter and it will show me every individual cell that includes the word cider. In this case, there are multiple cells that have cider in them. So I can just hit the right arrow here to scroll through each cell. This is a great way to find certain keywords fast. If you wanted to not only find a keyword, but also replace it, you could use the find and replace tool. On a Mac, use the keyboard shortcut Control F not Command F, Control F. And on a PC, use the shortcut Control H. Now, when you toggle over to replace, you have the option to find what you're looking for and replace it with something else. So for example, I see this row here where the data looks a little weird. I don't like that the supplier and item type are categorized as default and STR supplies. So I can easily replace every single cell that says default and I'll go ahead and replace that with other and I'll click replace all and it gives me the alert that it made the replacements and I'll do the same thing for str supplies. I'll go ahead and click replace all and it made all of those replacements. The last keyboard shortcut I have for you is command T 
or control T on a PC. So this shortcut is gonna turn your data into a table. I've already been referring to this data set as a table because it's set up like a table. We have our column headers in the top row and then we have rows of data underneath. But Excel will actually allow you to set this up as a formal table, which makes it easier to work with. So first I'm going to select all of my data here using my command shift down shortcut. And now I'll just use command T to turn this into a table. I'm gonna make sure that this box is checked to indicate that my table does have column headers and I'll click okay. So now you can very easily filter and sort your data. You can also give this table a name. Right here under the Home tab, you'll see a section called Table Name. And right now my table is just named Table 1. But if I had a bunch of tables in my spreadsheet, I'd wanna start naming them so I don't get confused when I want to reference a table. So I'll just go ahead and rename this Sales. There we go. All right, so we've just covered six helpful keyboard shortcuts that you can use to work more efficiently. And now we're gonna transition into two important Excel best practices for data analysts. So the first Excel best practice is to use tables instead of raw cell ranges. So we just created this sales table over here and actually setting it up as a table instead of just leaving it as a collection of cells is going to make it much easier to keep yourself organized. This way, if you add additional data, so let's just come down to the bottom of my table here and let's add an additional row. I'll just call this row. And we see that the table formatting extends to this row. It's a little hard to see because the background is white, but if we add an additional row here, we see that the format continues to extend once we add more rows. And this works for columns too. So I can just add a new column here right next to my table. Just call this new column. And the table automatically extends to include this new column. I'll just go ahead and delete this for now. Working with tables also allows you to reference tables and columns by name. So for example, you can actually reference the columns in a table by name instead of referring to them as column A, column B, column C, etc. So if I wanted to find the sum of this retail sales column, I could just come over here to an empty cell type equals sum open parentheses, and then just select the entire column of data. And that would give me the sum. But instead, it's good practice to reference the column name. So instead, in a new cell over here, I'm gonna say equals sum open parentheses. And now I need the table name, which we already said was sales. And we can see that my table is now highlighted. Now I can use an open bracket, and now I can actually just select the column name that I want to sum. So I'll go ahead and select retail sales, and now I'll just close my bracket and my parentheses and hit enter. So this is helpful for a couple of reasons. First is that you can tell just by looking at the formula what this number is. It says it's the sum of the retail sales column in the sales table. And secondly, this formula is now set up so that if I add more rows to my table, they will be included in this calculation. So this calculation will change to include any additional rows I add, or if I delete rows, it will change to exclude the rows that I deleted. The second Excel best practice is to keep your data, your calculations, and your reports all in separate tabs. So I like to have one tab for my raw data, and then for any calculations I want to do, I create a new tab and I just rename it calculations. And this is where I do all of my formulas and any calculations that I wanna do. If you have your calculations in the same tab as your data, it looks messy, but also if you do any filtering, so let's say that I just wanna filter out liquor here. Well, that then removes or hides any calculations that you had in this tab. So you don't wanna keep your calculations here. And of course, you want to keep all of your data and your calculations separate from your report tab. This way, the person viewing the report doesn't have to see all of this mess. They just see the clean output. If I'm sharing my report with someone else, I like to even hide the data and the calculation tabs. You can hide a tab by just right-clicking on the tab, then click on hide. 
and now it's hidden. If you want to unhide your hidden tabs, you can just right click on any tab, click on unhide, and then click on the tab that you want to unhide and just click okay. And you'll have to do that for each tab that you want to unhide. All right, so that concludes all of the content for this video. We covered two things here commonly used keyboard shortcuts, and a couple of Excel best practices. As we move through this course, you'll learn additional keyboard shortcuts and additional best practices. But now you just have some foundational tools in your toolbox to help you get started using Excel as an efficient data analyst. In the next video, we'll cover more Excel skills. But if you're already an experienced analyst, maybe you're thinking about how to use your analytical skills to build a business that earns recurring revenue, ClearSquare can help. ClearSquare helps data analysts package the dashboards they've already built and sell them to businesses as a white labeled SaaS product. If this sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the description to book a call today. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.